And welcome to Hannity and Combs. We are following a developing story tonight. Jim Johnson has resigned as the chairman of Senator Barack Obama's vice presidential vetting team. Now, this comes after days of controversy following the revelation that Johnson had gotten preferential loans from the embattled mortgage company Countrywide. The Obama campaign and the senator himself had tried to defend Johnson over the past couple of days, but Johnson said in a statement today that he didn't want to distract from Obama's historic campaign. Joining us now with more on this developing story. <laughs> former New York City mayor, former presidential candidate, Rudy Giuliani, how are you? How are you, Sean? Good you to see you. You look tan, rested, even <laughs> playing a little golf lately? Or? Well, you get a chance to do that when you're not in the middle of an intense campaign like I was yeah. last year at this time. Well, but you also have been out campaigning a lot for I have. I was with John yesterday. He had mm -hmm. a successful visit here in New York and raised some money and I think is in very good spirits and in, and in, very, in a very good position. I wonder if uh, Rudy Giuliani might get a call uh, to be vetted for VP. And well, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't seek anything. I really don't. Right. I uh, left my campaign and endorsed John because I felt he was the right person to be president of the United States. Right. And I think it's you know, for people who look at the world the way I do, this is an enormously important choice, uh, John McCain. I think it would be, be, be a big difference between him and, uh, and Barack Obama. Yeah. One of the things, uh, Barack Obama set himself up as a politician like we've never seen before. Yeah, very Gee. dangerous to ever do that because then you yeah. get, the, then you get, you know, when you, when you do the holier than thou thing, yeah. this is the kind of thing that happens to you, like happened with Johnson. I mean, you, you're mm -hmm. the new politics, you're going to be different, everything's going to be different, and this is, uh, this is a big <coughs> mistake. I mean, this, this, this is the guy who was going to help him select his, his uh, vice president in this new era and well, uh, obviously he's got serious enough problems that he had to, he had to, he had to drop out. I find this amazing, you know, he'll say about either Tony Resco or Jeremiah Wright, uh, this is not the person I've known for, for, for 20 years, well, same with you, Father Flager. When you add up a number of those, it yeah. uh, becomes a question of is this really a, a new politics or is this uh, this old style politics. And the, and the other excuse, he said, well, what am I supposed to do? I thought this was a pretty funny line. He was getting agitated with the media. What am I supposed <laughs> to vet the vetters? And, and, and this is a game that's being played. It seems like he doesn't want any vetting going on. It's like he's got, I said this last night, he's like he's got 10,000 press secretaries. I actually, I actually think the mistake that was made was to defend it. The, 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 yeah. Look, mistakes like this are going to get made. When they, when they get made, you have to... You have to deal with it immediately. All right. Well, what, what do you think for, I think there's a balancing act for, for Senator McCain in this campaign. And if you were running, I, I watched you up close and personal. We've been friends a long time. And you've always taken the tack that if somebody attacks you, you're going right at them. You don't back down. You're a fierce political opponent. I think I'm pretty, right. some of the best press conferences were Rudy Giuliani <laughs> in the New York City press. I mean, they're yeah. classic. Yeah, we they should go fun. back and air those they tapes. Uh, <laughs> because it was contentious and you were always right. honest. Right. But Senator McCain has shown a little bit of reluctance in terms of going after some of the controversies of Senator Obama. As he balances the, you know, should he run on ideas versus, you know, go after the weaknesses, that he's not really an agent of change, that he's a typical quintessential politician, where would you I balance think, it? I think, uh, first of all, it's different being a mayor and being a presidential candidate. And I think that um, you're going to find that in both cases, Senator Obama and Senator McCain, a lot of the attacking is going to be done by surrogates, and they're going to. Well, I mean, people like me. Right. A lot of the attacking is going to be done. You're surrogate. No, no, going to I'm be ahead of the surrogates. The stop a Obama of, Express. And, and look, a lot of these points are valid points. We have to examine yeah. people's experience. We have to examine their judgment and all these things. But I mean, you don't want a presidential candidate spending too much time on that. You want a presidential candidate. I think either party would say this. You want a presidential candidate focusing on the future, right, what they can do for the future. You want them on a higher, on a higher plane. Well, let me ask you this, because I really do not believe. In my heart of hearts, I'll look into this camera. I do not think Barack Obama has been honest, and I do not think he's made responsible decisions in his career. And I think we've been the victim of a bit of a propaganda marketing campaign. And I don't think we know who the real Barack Obama is. Do you agree well, with me? We're going to find out. I mean, that's about, that's. And the, he has the, a chance the, to define the, himself. The now. one, the one thing that you can be sure of in an American presidential campaign is. Uh, everything is going to be reviewed. Everything is going to be looked at. We're going to find out. Right. Uh, my big issue with Barack Obama is, and the one that I'm, I'm sure of, I don't have to worry about, you know, what's going to come out or what isn't going to come out. I don't think he has the experience to do uh, this. Mr. Right. Mayor, let me I ask think you it, And I think that is patently clear. Yeah. The, uh, you know, this, this idea of who he chose is for his vetting committee to get for VP, and you had John McCain, who's had three or four or five different lobbyists have to resign because he said, I'm not going to have lobbyists. He sets himself up as a holier-than-thou, purer-than-thou person who's not going to have any lobbyists in his campaign, and they've had to have three or four people resign. So well, but he's he, got but, the same but, but they attacked him. Uh, bitterly for that, the Democrats attacked John McCain. Because he set himself bitterly. up as, a, as a, well, someone who's not going to get they, involved with that kind of and, stuff. And he and he and he did get rid of them. And they weren't yeah. in a position to select his next vice president. And yeah. I think I think the issue. I think at least a lot of us Republicans think that Barack Obama is treated 
in a special way. If the if there are issues about people around John McCain, they get exposed. They have big big issues. They're not. They're going after Obama like nothing uh, these days. They're going after him on everything. Everybody he knows. Everybody he ever talked to. He was dry cleaner, his dentist. I mean, everybody's ever. Well, been maybe involved. that is going to happen now. But it wasn't happening. I think Hillary Clinton was complaining Look, about that. If you that. were Hillary a candidate, Clinton. if you were the nominee, you'd be, you had to defend yourself against Bernie Kerry. You Absolutely. had to defend yourself against people. If you were the nominee now, you'd be fighting the same kind of battles about people who you were associated with. Oh, of course he would. Every, every candidate does. The reason it becomes more of an issue in Senator Obama's case is, and I, I think the legitimate issue is lack of experience. He has, does not have, in my view, the kind of experience you need to be president of the United States. He's been in the Senate right. a very short period of time. He was a state legislator before that. Never run a company. Never yeah. run a government. Never run a government agency. Has no executive yeah. experience. George W. Bush was a one and a half term governor, gubernatorial weak state, had failed companies, lost a lot of money, but, failed businesses, yeah, did not have a lot of political experience, and yet governor, the governor of the second or third largest state in the country, and a gubernatorial and weak state, state executive, and one of the most complex states in which to get elected and to and to govern. And yeah. Ronald Reagan was a governor for two terms before he was president of the United States. The, and Gerald Ford was in Congress uh, for well, it. Ford was Congress, but, but Reagan and, and Bush did not have a lot of foreign policy experience. Bush famously could not answer who the head of Afghanistan was and a bunch of other things, knew very little about foreign policy. But he had and executive. The, the, the yeah. single most important thing that a president has to be able to do is make decisions, be able right. to know how to run a complex organization. Most people that run for president have that background and experience. So I know, I know you support Barack, and, but you've got to admit, this is a painfully small amount of experience for a job like I, this. I think people would, are, any, would any corporation yeah. in America hire someone with so little experience to run a complex uh, corporation? Given the disgust people have with both the president, 28 percent approval rating, and with Congress, both, ha both parties of Congress, and people do wanting their, the word change, don't you think there's an advantage to not being part of the inside the beltway mentality, being a, someone who represents yeah, somebody new is. and fresh and different? Absolutely. But then it doesn't, uh, doesn't, doesn't uh, detract from the fact that you need experience to do the job. The, okay. That experience isn't going to come just because you say the word change. And I, I, I took this up in the campaign because I, Senator Obama would say this so often. This is like a slogan. It isn't a reality. Change, but in what direction? How are you right. going to change things? Are you going to change things by raising taxes? Well, there are people who don't want you to change it and raise taxes. He's not going to raise taxes. He's okay. actually talked about lowering taxes for 95% of America. Tax. No, he's getting misrepresented. He's going to lower like taxes total, for most this people. This is like a total fraud. The idea that the Bush tax cuts are going to expire. Only that, for the top 2%. But that's, that'll be a, raise, that'll be a significant raise he's in taxes. He's going to lower them for most middle if, class if Americans. If the Bush tax cuts are expired. And the tax cuts go into effect and are, are done away with. And that's a major tax increase. And it's going to happen with capital gains tax. It's going to happen yeah. with dividend taxes. How many people's pensions are invested oh, in the market? Pick it up and right how there. much of an impact is that going to have on poor people or middle class people? We're going to pick it up in just a moment with uh, Mayor Giuliani. See, you, see, you see what Pursuit? I have to deal with every night? Well, you see, you, you poor you baby. You see what I've got to deal with? Stop. Stop, stop this whining. This is a choice you made. Oh, that's <laughs> true. I'm responsible for Can my you believe he's whining Check about it? This is a choice you made. Poorly. Sorry your career's not going so well, Hannity. Coming up, former presidential candidate.